I am Dave, founder of Halloween Year Round, and today I'm talking about the highly anticipated, the only Marvel movie we are getting in 2024, the third installment to a trilogy that we thought might never get resolved, and the return of a character whom we thought we'd never see again. I, of course, am talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. I am going to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, so I'm not going to really get into plot details other than the basic gist of what the trailers show. We know that Deadpool's world, his universe, is being threatened. We know that the TVA kind of involve him with going into other universes. We know that he recruits a Wolverine variant who let his own world down so that Deadpool can save the world and the people that he cares about. And Deadpool and Wolverine kind of go on an adventure together. And that is to the extent I will talk about the plot. I'm also not going to reveal any of the cameos. I think we all know from the trailers that certain people are in it. We've all heard rumors that certain people are in it. But I don't want to get into that here. That's not what this video is about. I will be doing a full video just about the cameos. So stay tuned for that. So let's start with kind of my overall thoughts, and then I'll get into a little bit more details. Overall, I really did enjoy this movie. It's really funny, there's a lot of great energy to it, and it's everything that I wanted out of, you know, seeing Deadpool. We haven't seen him in, uh, what, six years? So I really, really enjoyed just seeing Ryan Reynolds do his thing. I loved, and, you know, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one, it was kind of cool to see that Marvel MCU intro for a Deadpool movie. Never seen that before. I really, really liked, um, first and foremost, we got to talk about Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. Their on-screen chemistry is amazing. The way they play off each other, you know, the sarcastic, immature Deadpool and the very, you know, grumpy, gritty, angry Wolverine. They just, they, they play so well off each other, and it makes me so happy that I saw X-Men Origins Wolverine in the theaters, you know, 15 years ago when it came out. I remember that movie. I remember when Deadpool was, you know, Ryan Reynolds with his mouth, you know, cgi shut. And even if you go back to the beginning of X-Men Origins... Ryan Reynolds is kind of doing his Deadpool shtick when he's Wade Wilson at the beginning. And it's just, it's so cool because as, as just like a huge X-Men fan, look, the X-Men, when I was a kid, it was like Batman was my number one favorite, but X-Men was a very close second, even more so than any other Marvel heroes or Marvel characters. So it's really cool to finally get their proper team up and to get them in costumes that they should have been wearing years ago. This is the first time ever that Hugh Jackman is wearing the actual, legit Wolverine costume. So I just, I love watching the two of them on screen. I love watching them go back and forth. I, I love that, you know, they, they, they can both heal, but that doesn't stop them from just like so violently and, and, and with such gore just ripping each other to shreds. And it's almost because they know they can both heal, they both hold nothing back. So I really, really enjoyed that. I love the overall energy of the movie. I love that it, it's coming at kind of a perfect time. You know, there's even a, a, a meta joke Deadpool says where he's like, you know, hey, we're in the MCU. We're kind of we're kind of coming in at a low point. And he's not wrong. With the MCU kind of being all over the place, Deadpool and Wolverine, I know that Marvel is kind of counting on it to save them. I know that Kevin Feige said that this was, like, going to have major implications for the Marvel Universe. So it's coming at the perfect time. I don't know that it succeeds at saving the Marvel Universe. If only because I don't think that's actually the goal of the movie. Nor should it be. Let me explain. In a lot of ways, this movie reminded me of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dave, wasn't that not a very good movie? D 
Didn't you yourself write a not-so-positive review of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania? You're right, I did, I did. Allow me to explain. The similarities are both movies feature their title, both movies are the third installments of the trilogy, and they feature their title character going to a new world they've never been to before, where the very, very beginning kind of shows them in the world we know them in, but the greater Marvel machine becomes more important and pulls them out of their world, and they go through an adventure there. What I'm saying is, I kind of miss Deadpool's world. This whole movie is about him trying to save his world, but we don't spend a whole lot of time in it. Like, you know, Vanessa is is in it. Um, his, you know, Negasana Teenage Warhead, Colossus, uh, Peter, all, all these characters that we know, um, the cab driver, who's uh, Dohinder, I think his name is. We spend a little bit of time with them, Blind Al, of course. But I, I miss having a movie that they were kind of more, the not the focus of, but just they were in it more. And I know that Deadpool 2 kind of did the same thing, where like it killed Vanessa in like the first scene, and then like we don't see her again until he's saving her at the end when he's fixing all the timelines. So I just, I kind of miss Deadpool being in his own world. And I had mixed feelings about him being in this world, because... And again, I cannot stress this enough. This is a fun movie. You know, there's a lot of cameos. I'm not going to reveal who. Some of them, I was like, oh yeah, I saw that in the trailer. I was expecting to see that person. Others were like, oh, I heard a rumor you were in it. Okay, yeah. And other ones, I was like, damn, you're in this? Was not expecting that. In a way, it feels like the movie is like 90% cameos and fan service. Now, here's the thing. I don't expect like a like a plot like, say, Captain America Winter Soldier from a Deadpool movie. I, I don't expect that from it. I expect, you know, these are the movies that I expect the most fun from. But I feel like plot-wise, it is kind of inconsequential. And I kind of, I, I love Deadpool, but I feel like the movie, on the one hand, it wants to bring him into this new world, but on the other, it's not letting him, like, fully commit to that new world. And if you're not going to do that, can we have more of his world? Which, if you've seen it, kind of makes sense. I hope I'm not just rambling, but I just, I wanted, it felt less like a movie and more like a weird team-up special. Which, I know I kind of said the same thing about Infinity War, that one of the biggest criticisms of Infinity War was like, oh, the heroes don't really have a character arc. And I'm like, well, no, you kind of have to judge that movie. It's a team-up special. And Deadpool and Wolverine, in the same vein, does kind of feel like a team-up special. But I think they could have done a little bit more plot. Because there's other times where it tries to have plot, and it kind of admits that it doesn't have much of a plot. And it's like, wink, wink, we get it. But, like, you're still doing it. And I kind of feel the same way about, at this point, we're now how many movies into the multiverse? Um, we've had Spider-Man No Way Home. We've had Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. We've had two seasons of Loki. We've had The Flash from DC. I know I shouldn't count that. It's the other studio. I know. We've had two Spider-Verse movies, so at this point, I feel like audiences are kind of tired of multiverses, and to his credit, Deadpool points that out. You know, he's meta. I, I love, he, he takes shots at Marvel, he takes shots at Disney, he takes shots at 20th Century Fox, and he takes shots at the whole idea of multiverses, and even though you're making fun of it, you're still kind of doing the same thing. So this is a movie that I really, really enjoyed. I had a lot of fun with it. You know, very high energy crowd. Definitely go see it in a theater with a big crowd. You will have a good time. But I'm not going to pretend that it's like in the top tier of my favorite Marvel movies either. Like, it, it's a fun team-up special. And if you go in 
expecting just that and not expecting it to do anymore. If you go in, just wanted to have some Deadpool fun and just wanted to have some cameos and whatnot, that's great. It does the multiverse, I think, better than Doctor Strange 2 did, better than No Way Home did, but only because this movie inherently does not take itself as seriously as those movies were trying to. And there's this weird dynamic, I think, in entertainment and, and especially in movies where the more serious a movie takes itself, the higher kind of standard we hold it to. So even though it's doing all the same multiverse shticks and multiverse cliches and, you know, dare I say, uh, cameo porn, uh, you know, that Marvel's been so known for lately, because it doesn't take itself as seriously, I'm willing to give it a pass because it was so much fun and because I, I had such a good time with it. But let's not kid ourselves that it's, I mean, it's no Logan. And to this point, you know, I, I went into this very open-minded, like, I love Logan. Okay, fine, Marvel, fine. You're going to bring Hugh Jackman back. You're, you're going to let Logan not be his final appearance. I'll accept it if it's a team up with Deadpool for an accurate Wolverine. And I, now that I've seen the movie, I can honestly say I'm torn. Part of me is glad they did this because it was, I cannot stress enough, it was so much fun seeing Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman play off of each other. And you could tell even just like they're, they're not even acting when they talk about, you know, how long they've waited for this team up. And you can tell how much it means to not just the characters, but, but to the actors who've both been doing this for 15 plus years. Hugh Jackman for 20 plus years. But on the other hand, to quote the 2006 um, fantasy comedy movie, Stranger Than Fiction, where Will Ferrell is a, a character, he realizes he's a character in someone's novel. Uh, Dustin Hoffman's character says to him, because he realizes he's supposed to die at the end, he says, you could die any number of ways, but you will never have a death that is more meaningful than the one that is written for you. That's kind of how I feel about Logan being, you know, Hugh Jackman's end of the run of that character. He will never have another, that character will never have another death or ending that is as meaningful as Logan. So that's why I'm torn, because as much fun as this was, there is a, still a small part of me that's like, I still kind of wish they had let him end it with Logan, and this movie doesn't do enough to totally un to totally make me feel that it was worth bringing him back. But hey, these are just my thoughts. I would love to hear what you thought of it. Um, please leave a comment. You know, who was your favorite cameo? Uh, you know, do you think it was? You know, do you want to see Hugh Jackman keep coming back, or would you like to finally let the man eat carbs so he can stop looking like Wolverine? Like, share, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. If you don't, you may end up trapped between universes in a void like a certain someone and a certain someone else and as always every day is halloween